a Republican congressman, a CNN letter about federal elections. That's what we're going to talk about today. The Republicans have chosen to send CNN a letter, and this is an article in Daily Caller. GOP congressmen send letter to CNN's Jeff Zucker for refusing to air Trump campaign ads. Now, I just want to read this letter and do a little bit of uh, dialectalizing of said letter. Let's see if we can get this a little bit bigger. Can get a little bit bigger? All right. There we go. I don't care about you, Washington Post. Stop that. Dear Mr. Zucker. All right. Well, you started off uh, cordially. Good, good. Good. You're our Congress members. Remember, Congress members, they have the the power of government guns behind them, like legit. So remember that when a Congress member is writing you, that's that's what they got behind you. And that's important to note. Uh, I do want to say that this is not my first time reading this letter. This is not like one of those react videos. No, I already read this letter. I've already thought about what I'm going to say. <clears throat> As a press organization utilizing the freedom of the press guaranteed to you in the First Amendment. Wow. I'm just going to say right off the bat, this whole sentence here sounds like, you know, if we give you these powers out of the benevolence of our good hearts. That's what it reads to me. Again, if this is not somebody writing me that doesn't have the, the, the all the federal guns behind them, I might take this differently. But this is all these federal guns behind you, so remember that. It is, particular dis- it is particularly disheartening to see you suppressing the free speech of federal political candidates, potentially in violation of federal law and Supreme Court precedent. Violation of federal law and Supreme Court precedent. Wow. Suppressing the free speech of politi- free federal, it's a, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're, are you or are you not? Potentially a violation. If they're potentially a violation, they're probably not suppressing free speech of federal, federal political candidates. I'm assuming it's not legal to do that. As your news organization seems to have lost all sense of objectivity. Oh, that's good. Yep. That's good. That's what I want. I want my politicians writing media outlets, uh, free press outlets, and telling them that, uh, you know, basically offering them a news critique in a letter that is threatening them. Now, I'm, I, I want to make that clear. Like, this is a threatening letter. They are sending a letter to threaten, to intimidate CNN, sitting politicians with government guns behind them or sending a news organization, a letter directly threatening them. Now, I don't want you to get it wrong. I call CNN a, a news organization. Uh, I, I'll call them that for the sake of argument. They're not really a new o- news organization. They're really a military operation. But we don't have any laws against information military operations yet. So what they are is not defined in law. So they can act with some degree of impunity. But I wouldn't call them a free press. However... For the sake of precedent, I'm happy to include them in this context as the free press because remember, if you set the precedent that they can go after CNN like this, then they can go after Daily Caller. Here's the Daily Caller. You see the Daily Caller? Do you have a little logo? Oh, you can't see the Daily Caller logo in the in the screenshot thingy here. But it's there, trust me. Spinning itself into oblivion in support to support left-leaning candidates and participating in distortions against conservative candidates. Wow. I, I don't get why Congress members are writing such idiot fluff, such just... This sounds like a Facebook comment. This is like, this is... I uh, made a decision a few months ago because Facebook was... St- it was, it was sending me down a, well, I was sending myself, but Facebook was a tool that was definitely facilitating and encouraging me in in its its usefulness in, in, in throwing Molotov cocktails at one another. And I did it, and I, to some degree, still do it. But I decided to take it off my phone. I don't have it on my phone anymore. I only have it on my computer. So if I'm working, I may check my Facebooks. And if I'm 
not working, if I'm not anywhere near a computer, then I am not going to be checking in Facebook. And, and even when I'm on the computer, I'm usually busy, so I can't really occupy too much space on Facebook even when I'm on the computer. So that really tremendously reduces it. So I don't have to get uh, somebody sending me this comment or this type of commentary, which is so shrill and over the top and loaded with subjective valuations and opinions, just opinions. I mean, they may be true, but they're still just opinions. And this is these are Congress members writing a free press. Remember that not that CNN is a free press, but if you're going to let it slide with CNN, you're going to let it slide with everyone. And I'm not going to let this slide with anyone. So your decision, however, well, well, let me back up here. He, see, here we go. CNN has the right to spout your political commentators opinions while millions of Americans change the channel to do something else. Come on. That's exactly that is a classic Facebook comment. Oh, well, CNN has the right to spout your political commentators opinions while millions of Americans change the channel to do something to something else. Congress members are taking time out of their day. Uh, if you're going to write this letter, I'm just going to say this. If you're going to write this letter and you're going to have any credibility whatsoever, you need to write this letter in in strict gov speak. I don't generally like gov speak, bureaucratic speak, whatever you talk about it. But in this context, I prefer my gov speaks. I prefer my government. Not, not by my choice. I was born into it. I prefer my government to when when they're addressing the the non govs the people without the guns. I would like them to use the most sterile, scientific, logical, no emotional, no values, moralities beating me with none of that. I don't want my government doing any of that when it write le writes letters to me. That's that's like the hallmark of a fascist government when your government does crap like that. And this is this is this is a fascistic mindset that thinks that this is proper. I mean, this, this is a war, so it's OK. We're all engaged in a war, so it's OK. And they're not wrong. Unfortunately, the war that we're engaged in is between the the blue and the and the and the red fascists who are mostly in charge. However, the vast majority of Americans are are not fascist. But even if they're blue or red, they're not fascist. But 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 the people in charge, the people with the real power, overwhelmingly fascist on all sides. And and this is kind of proof. Your decision, however, to disallow advertising from the sitting president of the United States, a man duly elected to that post, despite your best efforts. I mean, what is that? And not only that, but this is whoever wrote this. There's a comma missing there. Your decision, comma, however, comma, good, to disallow advertising from the sitting president of the United States, comma, a man duly elected to that post. Now, this is where you need another comma. And this is... This bothers me that you have multi-million dollar budgets from these idiots with their wonderful bloated staffs, and yet their staffs between all of them couldn't muster up a comma where it belongs. Is a step that falls beyond your First Amendment protections and one that we believe is in violation of the law and the Constitution. In the landmark Buckley v. Vallejo case, the Supreme Court wrote, Discussions of public issues and debates on the qualifications of candidates are integral to the operation of the system of government established by our Constitution. The First Amendment affords the broadcast protection to such political expressions in order to assure the unfettered interchange of ideas for the bringing about of political and social changes desired by the people. Your decision to reject political ads by President Trump. Okay, did they reject President Trump political ads by... Okay, that's not good. You shouldn't be... Uh, while still running ads for the Democrats. Okay, they got a case here, man. They got a case. Now, I'm still saying, you know, if they have a case here, even if they have a legit case that this really does violate Buckley v. Vallejo, but I think that's a really, really big stretch. But let's just say it does. Okay, it doesn't matter that it does. Well, it, it does, you know, legally, if you're going to pursue them legally and, and you have judges that are going to interpret the law the way you think they should. Uh it doesn't matter because you've already pretty much outed yourself as complete fascist idiots. I can't take your side. I, even though you're going after the red fascist army of uh, CNN and they are, are one of the most powerful military operations in America today working to advance red fascism. So I, they're no friend of mine. I can't stand CNN. I think they're an enemy of 
of rule of law, an enemy of due process, of en an enemy of the ideational powers that exist in America that at least some degree give us poors opportunities to not be totally fascistized left, you know, whether it's blue or right fascists. So I'm no friend of CNN, can't stand them, wish they no longer existed. If I was the president of the United States, I'd probably declare them a terrorist organization and bomb them to oblivion. But uh, if I was president of the United States, I would do a number of things, probably illegal things, <laughs> probably illegal things, Ill illegal things. But at the end of the day, you would all love me. All the poors would love me. The, 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 the Citadelians, all the rest, y'all wouldn't love me. All the fascists, y'all, they all hate me. But the poors, y'all would love me. So your decision to reject political ads by President Trump while still running for Democrat kind of violates the Buckley principles. Doesn't even violate the law, just principles. That's that's what they're up against principles laid out by the supreme court particularly concerning is your own rationale now this is where the i've been waiting i didn't say anything i'm just waiting for this this is this is really what cinches the deal your own rationale that your organization chose not to run the ad in part because it disparaged cnn and its journalists i ran a newspaper for a few years and even when i wasn't running the newspaper i was still an integral part of the newspaper that that i was either the editor or i was the content manager so i was a significant part of the newspaper for a significant period of time and uh, during that period of time we took political ads and we took ads from everyone that wanted a political ad. However, I can honestly say that if somebody wanted to run a political ad in which in that ad they were lambasting my newspaper, I would not run that ad. And I dare the government to try to force me to run something on my platform that disparages my platform. You see, you don't get to force well, in America, so long as we have rule of all due process. Interestingly enough, the, 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 all the people who are going to be going against Trump on this, and or not Trump, but against the Republicans on this, and rightly so, they are advocating for red fascism. They are advocating for various forms of SJWism, which is uh, the underlying assumptions are not that there is such a thing as due process, rule of law, that we're trying to figure out the, you know, we want to settle conflict, we want to settle, like, the conditions of what is now and try to figure out who's right and who's wrong. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about the contextual valuation. Not only the present contextual valuation, but the historical valuation of the parties, the historical contextual valuation of the parties involved. And the adjudication will be based upon the subjective interpretation of the judge who will determine your motivation and intent based upon the class you belong to. It's, 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 it's fascistic, it's bigoted, it's, it's all kinds of anti-American, anti-American in the sense of uh, being fundamentally against the concept of due process and rule of law. It's against all that. And yet they're going to pretend to be all of a sudden all about rule of law and due process because they got a good case to make that, uh, see, these Republicans, this is not due process. This is not rule of law. You don't write when you're a sitting member of Congress. You don't write this letter in in a t in 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 any time in which I'll say the ideational power of of this thing called republicanism, the ideational power of due process, the ideational power of rule of law. In any time in which that is really, really strong in the hearts and minds of its of, of a nation's citizens, these Congress members are probably getting arrested for what they did because they should be removed from office. This is thuggery. This is high thuggeries. And I am not going to be condoning your thuggeries because you're attacking a thug. Because... Tomorrow, you won't be attacking a thug. Tomorrow, today, you'll be writing this letter to CNN, and tomorrow, you'll be writing this letter to uh, PG's newspapers. And that wouldn't be cool. So the people that signed this, by the way, I looked at the whole list. The only person of note is Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows, career over. How to end your career, Mark Meadows. Sign a letter from Nutburgers. There's, there's nobody else that I recognize that, uh, oh, oh my gosh, Louis Gohmert? Louis Gohmert, oh no. Oh my gosh, not Louis Gohmert. At two, Louis, you didn't see how idiotic this was? How fascistic this is? 
you Republicans who claim to be fighting against the the communist, do you call them communists? You think oh, they're communists and Marxists and they're not. They're fascists. They're very different than communists and Marxists. That's another story. I mean, they may use communist and Marxist kind of trappings and symbols and language, but trust me, at their heart, SJWism is not communism. It's not Marxism. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the people. It has everything to do with, well, I mean, it's it's just a vehicle of power for a very small group of people to hold on to, to prevent individuals from fully developing the means to be self-sustaining and self-reliant. And that's fundamentally what's going on. But that's, wow, that statement. That's one of those statements that there's a lot of thoughts behind that that I couldn't possibly share. So if you keep watching the videos on this channel, you get more and more of a story about why it is that I believe these things. Now, there's nobody to choose from here. Except, well, in this case, I, I guess I'm on the side of CNN here. Because CNN did nothing wrong. If all they did was refuse to air commercials that had CNN in a disparaging way. And apparently I, I saw somewhere, I don't know if it's true, that apparently they're claiming CNN has accepted a Trump ad. Just took, there were three ads, they rejected two and accepted one. And then from that, they wrote this letter. I wrote that letter. So thank you, GOP Congress, for showing the world that uh, if you really can't stand the SJWs, if you're just so sick and tired of them, if you're so tired of all the bloodshed that these people have have shed, of 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 uh, uh, of, of all, well, I guess of all the bloodshed, of the, all the blood these people have shed, if if you are tired of Nancy Pelosi and and Hillary Clinton, if you're tired of the shrill, hateful, bigoted squad, little hateful faces, if you're tired of all of them, got no help from the GOP because they're fascists too. They're just as bad. This is an SJW letter. This is what SJWs write to shake people down. So remember, now I, I know I know a few people that, uh, that coined the phrase I don't know who originated it, but uh, I love this uh, culture justice warrior. That's that's kind of what is on the right. The right has their versions of SJW called cultural justice warrior, and they really get apoplectic about flags and patriotisms. I'm not against flags. Well, relatively speaking, I mean, I'm an anarchist, so all in all, I would very much love it if all nationalists and nationalism and states went away. But I'm that's not going to happen. I'm not going to have my lifetime. I'm not trying to make it happen. Even though I would, you know, if I could Thanos y'all out of exist, well, not you. If I could Thanos the idea of the state out of existence, I would Thanos snap that in a heartbeat. But I don't have that. So I and I don't think people are evil or anything or horrible for loving their flags and their patriotisms. And within the context of the coercive enterprise governance model that we're all operating under, state, the various forms of of what you might call statism. Uh, Within those contexts, I don't. I understand exactly. I, I don't think patriotism in and of itself is bad. Nationalism in and of itself is bad. Well, you know, within again, only within the course of enterprise governance context, not outside of it, because outside of it, it's all bad. So I'm just saying that, you know, there is uh, patriotism, which is kind of proportional, and then there is patriotism that moves into uh, something a little bit more scary, and there's plenty of that over there. These people, uh, well, many of these people on the on the blue fascists, the blue fascists, they will they will literally kill you, or they say they will literally kill you if you burn their flag. I mean, that's insane. That's fascism. That's not liberty. That is not due process. That is not the role the, of law. That is fascism. So there you go. You got blue fascists and red fascists, and this time it's the blue fascists that decided to, uh, I guess, score their own goal because CNN was like on the ropes, getting hit every day, and you just hand them this gift. This is just snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Republicans. It's like they pick the stupidest Republicans, and they set them up. And then the stupidest Republicans fell for it and sent this stupid letter to CNN. Amazing. Amazing. I don't know. I, 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 I can't. There's nowhere to move. There's nowhere in the world to move because, believe it or not, America is still... Even with its 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 fascist war between the blue and the reds, it's still by far and away 
the best opportunity for humans to live a life of their own choosing. By far, not even close. I mean, there's some exceptions because of particular circumstances and conditions, but in aggregate, overwhelmingly, 99 out of 100 human beings would have much better opportunities to live the lives of their own choosing if they were born in America as opposed to anywhere else in the world. So I want to hold on to that. I want to preserve that. And uh, so, yay, America, you know, within this context that we all chosen to live in, and boo, boo these guys, all of them.